lot of stuff to do within it. We've got a bunch of shops that you can go shopping in, um, as well as some corridors you can have some firefights in. So let's jump right in, show you guys around. So this basically is the mood board that we got from our art directors, which showcases the direction that we want to go with the level. So in here you can see that we want to go super saturated um, and kind of neon noir. Um, it's a lot of contrast, a lot of reds and blues, and just it's a really cool lighting setup to, to go with because it's something that we haven't really done before. Um, so if I go over to our actual level here, see how that executed into the into the level. So I'll just fly around a bit here. This is our beautiful corner, which is the part of the environment that we take to 100% first, um, just to get a feel for how everything will look in the end. Um, so I'll fly around here a little bit. Um, another thing that we kind of focused on was integrating the shops a little bit more into the environment. So there isn't like a single door that you go into to go into a shop. You can kind of just come down this alley and, and see all the clothing just hanging there that you can try on and purchase. So one of the really interesting things that we've been working on is coupling the light entities with the actual light fixtures themselves. Um, this is something that's completely new to CryEngine that we, we purpose-built for this environment. Um, so when the lights actually flicker uh, in the level, the actual emissives on the, the assets will flicker as well. And so this makes it look a lot less fake, and it, it makes the environment seem more cohesive as you can change the, the light style, which is basically an animation that we apply to the lights, and the actual fixture will change to, to match that. So if we change the brightness, for example, to zero on this light, um, not only will the, the light within the scene change, the actual emissive will change as well, which is pretty significant. Um, that tech hasn't existed before, and it's something that's really powerful for us to, to make the environments again feel more cohesive and realistic. Good stuff. All right, let's jump over to Rob Reiniger, uh, lead technical designer here in Austin, uh, to talk a little bit about Grim Hex and uh, some shopping updates. Hey, I'm Rob Reiniger, uh, lead technical designer in the ATX office. Uh, we're going to show you a little bit more about shopping and the shops coming up in the Grim Hex station. So let's get to it. All right, first shop we got here for you is uh, Scudders, and it's a weapon shop. Uh, kind of a somebody who's just a little sick of the UEE, just kind of wants to get in, get his money. He knows he's uh, kind of selling weapons to people that are probably not going to do very good things with them, but. Uh, doesn't really care at this point, just fed up, that's why he's out here, Grim Hex. Um, but uh, he sells a combination of uh, mostly things geared towards outlaws. Uh, you can see the armor over here, it's a, kind of a combo shop. Um, one thing that we wanted to do was make sure that not every shop was just the standard format, you know, so this is a weapon shop, this is an armor shop, like things need to have character and the one way to do that is to, to make sure that we constantly you know cycle out the inventory as we go um, throughout the universe you know um, so the next uh, shop that we got here is um, run by a drug addict so it's uh, he's just kind of tucked away in the back alleys over here um, he's living out of the back of his shop so uh, the inventory he's got is uh, kind of this mix, mishmash of uh, different items. Um, this is not representative of the items that he's going to have. We, I'll give you a little showcase of, of what's coming up, but um, this is just for proxy work to make sure everything is, is looking the way we want it to. But uh, uh, as you can see, he's kind of living here in the back, you know, dimly lit place. Doesn't look very clean. He's not really a cl clean type of guy. Um, so it's real small. We were trying to go for the, the Chinatown um, flea market kind of feel. He's got stuff hanging from the raptor, rafters up here. Um, so it's, it's hopefully just going to kind of give a little more character and um, help continue that, you know, outlaw. We just kind of do things in our own little chaotic way uh, type of feel that the Grim Hex Station has. Um, so the other thing that uh, I kind of put together for you here before we get out of here is um, this is an uh, example of some of the, the clothing that is coming online here pretty soon. Um, we got some new boots, we got uh, a new jacket, uh, we got the little, you know, outlaw bandana coming online. Um, 
to give you a little showcase of some of the other items that we got. Uh, we don't have them in game quite yet, but um, and just a disclaimer: these may change a little bit before they get in game. But uh, you know, we got a couple couple of different hats coming online. Um, wide variety. We get a, a different leather jacket here that's a little more uh, kind of bad boy feeling. Um, much different variety of shirts that. Uh, deviates a lot from from what we had in the first release uh, just kind of a different feel than than what we had every every release at least for the the near future we want to try and get a, a different um, facilitate a different group of people within our world and so that way we can build the world out a little bit better and and make it feel much more unique you'll see a much different blend of, of people kind of walking around the stations uh, throughout the universe. Now let's go over to Josh Coons, a ship modeler here in Austin, to talk a little bit about an update on the Herald. The Herald's come a long way since the last time you saw it. We were at about 50, 60 percent with the gray box. We're at about 80, 85 percent. Uh, we've got some remaining finer details, the nuts and bolts, if you will, finer decals, a little bit of interior work to do, mostly cockpit related and design related. Um, we're going back and forth between uh, design and art when it comes to gameplay. So those are the remaining art tasks. Uh, it's shaping up to be a really, really nice ship, and uh, I can't wait for it to be done. And uh, you guys get to fly it around the, around the verse. All right, we're excited now to uh, give you guys a little something I know you guys have been waiting for. Uh, a special treat interview with uh, Tony Zurevic, director of the Persistent Universe. Uh, we'll just kick it on over to him. The last several months have been really busy. We got the first iteration of Shopping and Persistence out the door, which is something that we've been working towards for quite a while. This was really critical, not just for the near-term functionality that it enabled, but also for a lot of up upcoming features. Uh, we wrapped Levski quite a while ago, and we were originally planning to release it earlier this year, but the guys in Germany have been making such rapid progress with the procedural planetary stuff that we decided to hold off and release the, the two things together. This necessitated a bit of retrofitting, though. Uh, Levski had to be merged into one of those procedural bodies, and it had to have changing boosts added so that you could outfit your character uh, with anything that you'd purchased. Uh, we also had to upgrade the number of landing pads Adds this, since you'll be able to seamlessly fly from space right down to the city and we wanted to minimize how long you'd have to wait before you could touch down. Um, artistically, Levski is absolutely gorgeous with one of the most interesting areas being a Blade Runner-esque bazaar where small vendors will sell all sorts of things. Uh, the main area will be pretty safe and secure, but if you want to buy or sell any illicit goods, you're going to need to venture down into the abandoned areas of the facility where it's much more dangerous. Uh, more, more recently, I've been spending more and more time uh, on Subsumption, which is the AI and mission system that's going to drive all the gameplay. Uh, I'm working on the architecture and programming the editor and you know, in general working very closely with Francesco Ricucci in Germany and a lot of uh, other programmers over there in Germany and the UK to bring this entire system into being. Subsumption is going to have a dramatic impact on the gameplay experience because it's going to seriously increase the productivity of the designers that are charged with crafting all of the AI and mission logic. By comparison, the missions that we're currently putting into the game, uh, they take far more time to construct, they aren't nearly as flexible, and they're much more prone to errors. They, this increase in efficiency, it isn't just about allowing more content, uh, it's also very much about allowing us to create better content. Uh, by way of example, think about a bartender. If you want them to look really intelligent, they need to be able to formulate complex responses to a given stimulus. A request from a patron for a drink might cause them to head on over to the sink, grab a glass, walk to the beer tap, use it. Uh, then put the drink on the table in front of the customer and depending upon whether or not they get stiffed, either head back behind the bar or call security. The issue though is that you need your characters to be able to respond to lots and lots of different stimuli. Uh, a glass that falls on the floor and breaks needs to be swept up. 
uh, a garbage can that's full needs to be emptied, a rowdy patron needs to be warned to quiet down, and on and on and on. Uh, these responses also need to be prioritized. It's okay to stop cleaning dishes to break up a fight, but not vice versa. There are a lot of subtleties, like whether or not a stimulus needs to propagate after a character has agreed to respond. The sound of a gunshot should affect everyone, but a request for a drink can only be filled by a single server. These subactivities, as I call them, also need to be able to be combined when appropriate. Uh, the characters need to be able to walk and chew gum at the same time. The problem becomes more apparent when you consider that the game will have a lot more than bartenders. You're going to have shopkeepers, tourists, vandals, security guards, and loads and loads of other types of characters, all of which are going to need you know, an extensive array of potential responses. Uh, these are precisely the types of problems that Subsumption was designed to handle.